I'm Damien Fowler. And I'm Ailee Sliffering. And welcome to this edition of The Current Podcast. The Current is your deep dive into the future of TV, media, and data-driven marketing, all explained in plain English. We talk to the biggest names in digital marketing, and we're delighted to kick off this season with Kathleen Hall, the Chief Brand Officer of Microsoft, the world's largest software company. Kathleen is an award-winning marketer. She's responsible for the Microsoft brand, which is no small feat considering the range of products the company offers, from Windows to Xbox. And it's been a big year for the company as it scales up its gaming capabilities and not to mention that partnership with Netflix. But before that, we started by asking Kathleen about what it means to be a chief brand officer. I think the the mission of the role of chief brand officer is to articulate for the internal team and the external world what Microsoft's role and position is in that world and what our values base is. It is very important that people understand not just what we sell, but who we are as a company and what our mission and values are. And it's also very important for employees to align to that. In addition, then we set the example in terms of execution on how to bring the brand to life, our tone and manner, our palette, all the, all the tools and elements of the brand that really align to representing that kind of personality and values, but also keep us consistent in the world. That's awesome. You know, and the Microsoft business model is very diversified. Obviously, it spans from Office to gaming with Xbox, LinkedIn, Search with Bing, and lots more on top of that. How do you, as chief brand officer, really step back and look at the big picture and prioritize what it is that the company offers? Well, I think, um, you know, we almost have an embarrassment of riches in terms of the variety of audiences and products that we offer. So whether it's something like the Xbox Adaptive Controller or the work we're doing to make sure people who farm are getting the maximum yield out of their farming through AI, it's all about what are we doing to make the world better and what are we doing to make people's lives better? And how can we tell those stories in a way that represents our product's role in that, but really how we're empowering people to make and affect change in the world. So we get to look across all of that and kind of create the greatest hits, if you will, of what the stories are we're able to tell. And I think sometimes tone and matter varies a little bit. I think there's a a mantra in the world of there's commercial and there's consumer and they're different and they're really not. They're really not. There's an emotional connection that people have to brand. So whether it's a a CEO watching a football game and seeing Surface on the sidelines or the Xbox Adaptive Controller ad in the Super Bowl or seeing a very specific Azure ad, it's still Microsoft. It's all about what we're connecting with him and how, and it's about emotion as well as rationality. So interesting to hear you talk a bit like that because, you know, at the end of the day, you're a tech company and you're known for your impeccable engineering And yet at the same time, you're focusing on not on the tech so much as as the actual utility of the tech. And I think maybe for that reason, that's why Can Lyon named Microsoft Creative Marketer of the Year in 2021, as I understand it. You know, could you talk about some of those campaigns in a little bit more detail about why they're winning and why people engage so much with Microsoft on that emotional level that you're talking about? I think that one of the reasons we ended up being recognized as Cannes Marketer of the Year is I think it speaks to that variety I just mentioned, that we have a a broad range of products and services, all of whom have a dual role of performing in the way they're meant to perform for people in their roles, whether it's as a consumer or as a commercial person, but also changing, as I said, changing lives in a positive way. And I think creativity today is recognized beyond just selling products. Creativity is recognized for you know being commercially successful while at the same time making the world a better place and representing a position in the world. And I think our best work has really done that and engaging people at an emotional level. And it's not always like a, you know, a, a heavy values-based political position. Like you look at one of the biggest campaigns that won a lot at Can was the, um, the Survivor Billboard for Xbox. And that's just a an example of uber creative thinking, taking an old medium that people don't at the time didn't think about much like outdoor, turning it into an event. I also love the Beyond Generations initiative that you did where you talked about the generational divide between families and you had an older gentleman playing an Xbox, trying to connect with younger people through gaming. I I think that's fascinating the the way you, you deployed those campaigns. Yeah, I think it brings up a point, Damien, that great campaigns and creativity really 
don't know boundaries. It's not an age or a demographic or even a geographic. It's the universal truths that resonate with people. And that's what we look for. And I think that's what makes great creative and is often most recognized in, in places like Can. Yeah. And you know, the tech landscape has just been constantly evolving. And you've been at Microsoft now for 14 years and you've seen so much change during that time. What would you say have been like the biggest challenges for the brand over this time and for you personally? Wow, big question. I think the biggest challenge for the brand came in its very initial phase, which is Microsoft was really the poster child for bad marketing and marketers were demoralized at the company. If you remember the I'm a Mac, I'm a PC campaign, you know, we were the, the kind of nerdy fat white guy that got his ass kicked by the cool guy from Apple. And I think having come into the company at that time to change the mentality of we are not a victim, we are survivors and we are change agents and we need to, you know, kind of pick ourselves up and shine a light on what's great about us. So the joke we used to tell is we need to do a little queer eye for the straight guy makeover on our big fat white guy and make sure that he he being the nerd is cool and, and that has happened in the world. So that was really an important mindset shift. And I think it started internally. I think for me personally, to answer the second part of your question is, this is a big move for me personally. I'm an East Coaster. East Coast comes with its own kind of personality and style. So I'm an East Coast advertising person coming to a Pacific Northwest tech company. If you want to talk culture, you know, kind of clash, there was a huge culture clash. So it took a while, but I think I changed a little bit and the company changed a little bit around me. I think it was kind of a, a mutual adjustment. But I think when you're trying to affect change, being an outsider and being a little different in style probably is an asset. But certainly my perspective was different. And I think the company was ready to respect the perspective of a non-engineering person, a person who comes from the perspective of consumer and creativity. So I think it was in some ways a, a perfect storm personally and professionally. Nice. Now to change the topic a little bit, it was reported that Microsoft is sitting out the upfronts. Is this a risky gambit, especially given that Microsoft has a very strong presence on broadcast and cable? I believe that brands are all about relationship and they're very akin to human relationships and human relationships are based on good communication and a constant flow of communication. And as you know, probably from personal relationships, when things go quiet and dark, it's not a good thing. So I, I don't like the fact that we at this time are not very present in the marketplace telling our stories through thick and thin. I do understand though that there are financial constraints and financial, you know, kind of headwinds that we're running into and therefore the decision was made that it may be not it may not be the right time for us to be out there speaking loudly and very visibly. So yeah, I'm I'm a little bit conflicted to speak about it because, you know, what I think kind of personally as a as a brand manager and what you know the company perspective is 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 a little bit different right now we're certainly not dark so so while we might not be present in upfront broadcast if you're watching the nfl games on the weekend you see surface all over the sidelines and we're visible and we're part of the fabric of the game and we're one of the highest associated brands with the nfl and then when you're watching programs on streaming you'll see a lot of surfaces and a lot of xboxes and a lot of content that's ours so there's a lot of other uh levers and mechanisms that are still marching forward and are keeping us present and visible. Yeah. I mean, obviously at this juncture, it's probably a good place to ask you a little bit about this year's big news in the tech world, which was the Netflix partnership with Microsoft. You know, and obviously that touches upon the importance of ad funded streaming. What's your take on that? What's in it for Microsoft? My two responses were yay and yay. Yay as a stockholder and an employee of Microsoft and yay as a marketer, right? I, I think the potential of the Netflix partnership and a paid service is pretty high for me as a marketer in the, you know, the absence of cookies and being able to identify people in a way that we'd like to target them. To be able to have a, a streaming service base of knowledge of their customer base with the breath, hopefully, and strength of some kind of tonnage and impact, it's it's pretty exciting. So as an advertiser, I, I, I am very excited. On the company side, I think it's a great recognition of our evolution as a company where we bridge the worlds of, of tech and, and sort of, you know, social context and media. And I think it's, um, we were, I, I think, a surprising choice for some people, but I think for me, it's a very logical choice based on our history and experience in the sales side of the world and the tech side of the world. So I'm excited, I guess is the net net. 
just on that front, we've talked a lot. We talk a lot about how Netflix made streaming a very streamlined experience when it comes to the content. And I'm wondering what your take is on where streaming ads are at the moment. You know what, Damien, I hate to admit it, but I'm a little disappointed in where we are in streaming advertising right now. I think my expectation, I think what, what sums it up for me was watching football over the weekend and seeing Jeff Bezos and Goodell in a booth together. Like that says to me, old media. That's like when we used to see Les Moonves and Goodell sitting in a booth together. And that to me captures what I think has happened, which is a disappointment, which is, it just feels like CBS on Amazon Prime. Like the way we buy isn't different. The, the, the ad unit experience isn't different. The integration isn't different. I don't think the outcome to the advertiser in terms of understanding your impact and audiences is different. Like the potential was so huge. And for me, I feel like you just swapped a logo in a way. And, and you know, the delivery mechanism is different, but the opportunity is so great and it's not being realized yet. So maybe that's the potential for Netflix. Yeah, and what do you see that opportunity as? Well, the opportunity is the best of both worlds. The opportunity is the promise of digital was, you know who you're talking to and you can track whether you impacted them from a business outcome perspective. That specificity of impact and, and hopefully measurement of business outcome. The downside was it's fragmented, it's small, and you had limitation of you know, your capabilities within digital advertising. The promise of broadcast is the, the you know, the, the might and the, and the breadth and the communal experience of it and, and the tonnage and the immediacy and all of that. So what streaming could have brought was the best of both of those together. And what I'm seeing is kind of neither, kind of okay on the, on the breath, but you're not getting the advantage of, you know, how can I better understand who I'm impacting and what the business outcome is. So we still got a ways to go. Do you think um, you anticipate that that's going to get better and possibly on Netflix? I anticipate it has to be. I think, especially with the decline of cookies, I think that the pressure on advertisers to understand who they're reaching and what they're getting out of it is going to be very high. And I think also, I think there's some creative juices that have been let not let out of the box on the content side. I think people are going to understand there's bigger opportunity here than running 30 and 60 second, 15 second, six second ads like we always have. Definitely. And, you know, Microsoft is also expanding more into gaming. Obviously, Microsoft acquired Activision Blizzard this year, which got a lot of attention, not least from the millions of gamers out there, as well as regulators. Uh, what is the story that the company wants or needs to tell around this acquisition? Well, I think the story that the company wants or needs to tell is some of the story people want to hear, which is, look, gaming is part of the fabric of our life now. My husband, who is not a young man, is now gaming on his mobile phone. You know, we pried his flip phone out of his hands and finally got him on a current, a real smartphone. But I think that gaming is part of sort of the fabric of our lives and the way we entertain ourselves and I think it is not something that is confined to a console, and I don't think it ever will be again. So between mobile and desktop and, you know, all the ways through cloud that you can experience gaming, it, it's like, it's pervasive and it's a, almost a limitless opportunity. I, I also note, you know, just as a sort of addendum to that, that the recent um, Microsoft ad Featuring Justin Long, formerly of the Mac v VPC ads, is now on your side. And the big ad is around no one really games on a Mac. So that's that's an interesting gambit for uh, Microsoft. I really love that ad, by the way. Yeah, and true. It's, o it's always been part of our DNA and differentiation. It's not something we've really made hay about. It's funny, I was looking at um, search queries recently. And one of the highest search queries is all around Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's because people... Like there's such a passion for that game and the experiences it provides. And it's not like we talk about it very much. It's not like you hear about it from a you know broad marketing perspective, but the engagement at the consumer level and the commitment to it is really high. Yeah. You know, the world has changed so dramatically in the last two years with, you know, all sorts of social causes coming to the forefront. Um, what, what kind of challenges do you face as a, as a brand manager in this current context, in this social context. I know CMOs often talk about our values and our truths and how those, those need to be internalized by the company. How does that play out when it comes to marketing campaigns? You know, I think it's very challenging. I, I, I have never been a, uh, a fear-based 
a marketer or heavily concerned with risk. But I do think in today's environment, it is very difficult for brands to accurately present commitment values position to the world without risk without you know the world is very very negative on pretty much everything even when you're trying to do good these days so on the other hand i recognize that there's a lot of virtue signaling and a lot of statement without commitment and action that the world calls brands on so i think that it's it's a tough and and sensitive time for brands i think for a brand like microsoft what we have going for us is our values and positions were so well established before a lot of the major social issues and challenges of the most recent last couple of years. So it's not inauthentic for us to speak about them and present examples of them. And also being who we are and being a tech company, everything we talk about and everything we associate ourselves with is rooted in material change that we're making in that community or around that issue like sustainability or race and, and equity and actions are the foundation of everything it's not just talk but even with that how you talk you got to think about it very carefully you've got to have good agency partners as well i, I guess i was mean, thinking of recently of the windows 11 ads which very much lean into that I was thinking there was a uh, Pride Has No Borders campaign and there's a one ad featuring a, a fashion designer who designs clothes for the plus size community. Are those the kind of things that you're talking about? Oh, I love that you know our recent repertoire. Yes, you know, we work closely and I've been involved with the UN on Stereotype Initiative, but that's been our mission for the last 15 years is to shatter stereotypes and I think, you know, whether it's the plus size woman or an extended black family, which is rarely shown on television, or, you know, a female who's designing basketball shoes specifically for women because our feet are different, or we had black twins who are scientists at MIT. We're constantly looking for ways to represent, you know, alternative perspectives on people's in, ingrained stereotypes. And I, I think it's good for the brand and it's good for the world. And it, it means something. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a side story. We were, we were shooting the Peace on Fifth commercial. And I, I don't know if you remember that, but it was when our employees in our store on Fifth Avenue marched down Fifth Avenue to sing to the Apple employees. And it was really spontaneous. They didn't know we were coming. It's all true. And we sang, let there be peace on earth. Well, interestingly, part of our initiative, of course, is not just diversity in front of the camera, it's behind the camera. And I'm standing and I'm a New Yorker. So you're kind of proud. You're on Fifth Avenue making a commercial like a Bronx girl made good. And we had a female AD. And so she was behind the camera setting up the shot. And I was just standing on the sidewalk. And this little girl with her mom walked by and she goes, look, mommy, it's a girl. So the fact that she saw a woman setting up a shot on a camera, now that will stick with that kid. Like she, she may say, hey, that means I can do that too. That's what matters. So all these seemingly little choices that you can make as a brand manager and a marketer really can have material impact on the world. You know, I feel like overall the industry is moving more towards that, um, showcasing more diversity and standing up for a cause marketing. Um, do you feel like there's just so much more work to be done in that area? I think it has a risk of being overplayed. I, I think that's where the uh, uh, authenticity meter kind of starts to run and people get critical. I think we need to be cautious as brands again, not to pander, not to virtue signal, to make it true to your mission, your purpose, your actions. It has to be very, very rooted and authentic for it to be meaningful in the world. But it is true, as you've seen every study that I've seen, that you know brands play a very important role in society today, where the expectation is you will represent a point of view and you will get involved in social issues and you will advocate for meaningful change. So yeah, it's a balance though, I think. And that's it for The Current. Stay tuned because next time we'll be talking to Chad Fox, the CMO of Dollar General. If you're sitting there in, in New York as a young media planner and you're putting something together, you're not really thinking about rural America. That's probably not top of mind for you, yet it's additive. You know, the way that I think of DG Media Network is we're the easy button 
that agencies and brands and, and shopper marketers can hit to deliver that hard to reach and hard to measure rural customer. The Current is produced by Wonder Media Network. Our theme is by Love and Caliber. The Trade Desk team includes Cassie Crosby, Yvonne Sikich, and Kat Fessy. And remember, all these seemingly little choices that you can make as a brand manager and a marketer really can have material impact on the world. I'm Elise. And I'm Damien. And we'll see you next time.